So to teach them about prayer, he used this story. Listen to the story carefully. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight. Say midnight. midnight. That's important. Wanting to borrow three loaves of bread, you say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. Suppose he calls out to you from his bedroom, don't bother me, the door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed, I can't help you. But I tell you, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need. Watch, because of your shameless persistence. Then he goes on into, so ask and you will see, and seek and you'll find, and knock and it'll be open. Y'all, this story is amazing. Because Bob Sorge wrote a life-changing book that came to me when Lindsay was gone, transformed my life. This, this word became rhema. And what, what Bob did was he broke it down into today's, you know, culture. So I'm going to use Bob's illustration to tell you this story. Bob Sorge. Bob took that passage exactly as it was written, and he just, you know, brought it to today, and he said this, okay? There's three men. We're going to call them Jim, Dave, and Rick. Rick lives in St. Louis. Jim and Dave both live in Dallas. Rick is needing to go to Houston, going to drive through Dallas, going to Houston. So Jim and Dave and Dallas are good friends, very close friends, very close friends. And that night, actually, Jim, Jim had dinner over at Dave's house. Had a great dinner with the family. Had a wonderful time talking. And um, finished eating. And, and uh, after they got through, you know, late, Jim goes on home with his family. But Rick is driving through Dallas. And, and Rick and Jim are also friends. And Rick, while he's driving through Dallas, it's about midnight. And boy, Rick's getting tired. And he said, you know what? I remember Jim lives in Dallas. I'm going to stop at his house. I'm just going to stay there tonight. So Rick stops at Jim's house, and it's late, but knocks on the door. And according, if you want to jump back into Jesus' time in Jewish culture, they were very hospitable people when they have guests. You know, the family is involved, the wife, the children, everybody is involved in unexpected guests or any guest. So Rick goes to Jim's house late, knocks on the door. You know, Jim's, oh, Rick, how are you doing? Oh! It's so good to see you, unexpected. And Rick begins to explain to Jim, you know, I'm driving through. I'm just too tired. Do you mind if I stay here? No, Lord, no. Come on in. Come on in. Y'all just make yourself at home. You got the whole family. Wonderful. Y'all, let me get my wife up, honey. Y'all get up. Everybody get up. We got company. Rick's, come on. Rick surprised us. Come on in. I know. Isn't that wonderful? Come on. Come on, y'all. And so he says, he sits down. And Rick sits down. Jim says, you know, Rick, y'all y'all hungry? You want me to get you anything to eat? Rick says, I'm starving. I ain't had nothing to eat all night. So Jim goes to honey, come in here in the kitchen. Let's get them something to eat. We get in the kitchen, and, and Jim's wife looks at him, and she says, Jim, you know we ain't got nothing in this house to eat. That's why we ate at Dave's tonight. And so Jim's like, oh, I know it. He says, but you know what? I can run over to Dave's house because tonight after we finished dinner over there, I saw him put three loaves of bread in the pantry that was left over. So what I'm going to do, you get in there and entertain Rick. I'm going to run over to Dave's house, and I'm gonna, I'll be back. I'm going to borrow three loaves of bread. I'll be back. You just entertain him until I can get back. So what happens is while she's with Rick, Jim gets in the car, drives down the street over here to Dave's house. And it's a little after midnight, but you know that's okay because they're friends. Mm -hmm. So Dave. Hey, Dave. Dave. Who is it? Who is it? Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave, it's Jim. It's Jim. I, I'm, I'm needing some help. I need you to get up if you can. I, I need, I'm needing to borrow something. For heaven's sakes, Jim, do you know what time it is? I do. I do, Dave, and I hate that so bad. I know, I know how late it is, but listen, I've got a little emergency here. I'm needing to borrow three loaves of bread. I don't even know if I have any bread, Jim. Yeah, you do. Actually, tonight I saw you put three loaves in the pantry while we were there. Three loaves. That's all I need. I just need three loaves of that bread. Jim, I am in bed. It is late. You can come over in the morning. 
Jim, I, Dave, I don't need it in the morning. I'm needing it right now. I can go to the bakery in the morning. I need you to get up right now and go in there and get in that pantry and give me three loaves of bread. Jim, I am telling you, you need to go home. Get off of my property. <laughs> now, the deal is, truth be known, when Dave, when Dave tells Jim to get off his property, things actually change a little bit because there are laws for this. And now then, what Jim's doing is called trespassing. And the truth is also that Dave has a right to call the police and have Jim removed from the property. But the thing also is, Jim knows that Dave is his friend. And they've got a long history together. So although Jim knows Dave could call the police, Jim also knows Dave ain't going to call the police because he got such a good history of their friendship. So you know what Jim does? He just keeps knocking. Hey, Dave. Dave. I got I to gotta need that bread. I got to have three loaves. Jim, go home. Oh, you've woken up the kids now. Get No kids. Oh, everything's fine. Oh, it's just Jim from coming over tonight. He's just needing to borrow something. No See, one. this is good. This is good. Because what happens is Jim also knows that if you get the kids woke up, it's going good for you because you can get some more stuff stirred up. And listen, the truth is when you've been praying about something and you're not hearing from God, it's like God's not answering your prayer. What you need to do is go get some of his other kids' intercessors stirred up with you because what happens is what happens? those kids are going to start saying, Daddy, who's at the door? And Dave's going to go, it's Jim. And they're going to go, what does he want? And he's going to say he's wanting to borrow some bread. And the kids are going to say, Daddy, give him the bread. Give him the bread. So when you get some intercessors praying with you, come on. The power of agreement says, God, give Karen the bread. So what you do, what do you do, what do you do when the door won't open and you've been praying and asking and asking? This is Jesus' idea. That didn't make this up. This is his story on how I want you to pray. Dave. 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 Dave, it's Jim. Dave, I tell you what, I ain't in no hurry. I can sit right here. I can sit right here. Dave, I'm going to sit right here at this door until the sun comes up. I ain't going home until I get my bread. I know you've got the bread, and I need the bread, and I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> until I get what I've come for. Come on, come on. That's why God brought you tonight, to tell you you can't give up praying. you got to keep praying. you got to keep believing till you get everything that God has promised you. Come on. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Come on. Who needs some bread? Who needs some bread? Come on, anybody need bread? Anybody need bread? Come on tonight, I'm here from Alabama to give some bread. In the name of Jesus, come on. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody need bread. Somebody need bread. In Jesus' name, come on. We're going to believe for the bread. We're going to believe for the bread. We're going to believe for the bread. Anybody need bread? Come on. I'm almost done, but I got to give you the ending of my story. But you just sit down and let me tell you the ending. Lindsay's almost home. Hang on. I'm going to tell you one more thing and we're done. Do you get that, y'all? If you don't remember nothing else from this girl from Alabama, remember, Jesus gave you permission to pray like that. Now, you don't pray like that with a part-time relationship with God. You don't pray like that when you've just got an occasional call on you when I need you relationship. No. Listen, God's not some Santa Claus or sugar daddy. He is God. Come on. And he is your father. And he wants a relationship with you. But when you have intimacy with God, then you have the privilege of being able, oh, come on. Even Jesus said, Jesus said, if he won't get up just because of friendship's sake, he said, he'll get up, watch, because of your shameless persistence. 
If you look up the meaning of that, it means because of just the gall. That's what the interpretation of that word means. Gall. Just gall that says, I don't care what anybody thinks. I look like a fool, and I know I look like a fool. And I know people think I'm crazy, but I'm going to keep knocking. I'm not going to stop. I've got a word. I've got permission to stand at this door, and I'm not leaving the door till the door opens. Well, for time's sake, I wasn't going to tell you this, but I've got to tell you one thing that happened when she was gone. I was, I'd been contending for that bread for weeks for Lindsay. I had been praying, my Lord, and declaring that word. In fact, in my house, in my living room, I would go to the front porch, the door, the front door of my house. And I would literally take that scripture and I'd just say, I'd say, God, it's Karen. You said I could ask God and I'm asking for bread. God is Karen. Lord, I need three loaves for Lindsay. I need three loaves for her healing, her salvation, and her deliverance. I need three loaves for Lindsay, God. Give me the bread. Give me the bread. You said pray this way. You're the one that said I could. And here I am, God. Here I am, God. And months, and one night, I was at the ramp. She was still gone. And y'all, we were in worship. And in the middle of worship, the kids in the ramp, were a thousand kids in there worshiping. I'm on the platform in my own little place with Jesus, just worshiping. I wasn't even thinking about that prayer. And all of a sudden, I went into a vision standing there. And suddenly, before me, I see a door. And I thought to myself, what is this door? I see it as clear as you're looking at me. All of a sudden, the door opened. And out from behind the door, just as you just saw, came two arms. And they handed me three loaves of bread. And I literally stood there and I went like this. I went, "Ah! are you giving me the bread? You're giving me the bread. And when I said that, that door opened wide. And when the door opened wide, I stepped inside the door. When I stepped in the door, I looked around and I realized I was in a warehouse of nothing but bread. It was shelves of bread from the floor To a ceiling you cannot even comprehend. More bread than your mind can imagine. And I'm looking at these loaves of bread. And I heard a voice speak to me. And he said, you just want three? I said, no, God. No, God. I'll take the whole warehouse. I need the whole warehouse for a generation of other young people, God. Give me the bread. Give me all the bread for kids, Lord, for young people everywhere. Give me the bread. Come on. Come on, don't ask a small thing of a big God. He didn't put a limit on what you can ask for. 